Well, good evening. I'm so glad to be able to share another text with you this evening. I just got off the phone with a dear old friend of mine uh, who was telling me in, in our conversation about a text that the Lord uh, just providentially brought into his family's life um, as they were memorizing the Bible, he and his children. Uh, it was at just the right time. And, and then when he told me what it was, I thought, man, not only did God give you the right text at the right time, he gave me the right text at the right time too, because this is the text that I'm going to share with those who watch these short devotionals uh, that I've been doing. And the text is James chapter 4, starting at verse 13. Here's what James says. Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. Let me just pause right there. How many of you made plans just two months ago about what you were going to do this year? And now look at those plans. They don't exist anymore. Maybe you were planning on taking a trip. Maybe you were planning on... on you know, a family vacation somewhere warm or something like that. And then this massive worldwide pandemic just comes and shuts the book on all of those plans. So what does James say? You do not know what tomorrow will bring. Well, this is a verse that is very applicable to us. See, the Bible was written to thousand years ago, but it is an eminently contemporary book. It speaks to us today because the word of God stands forever. It never changes and human nature, people don't change from the time of the Bible to till today. I mean, what I mean is, of course, people can change by the power of the Holy Spirit, but human nature is still human nature. That's what I'm saying. And uh, we are not in control of the future. And our plans are really useless unless God is the one who gives approval to them, honestly. So the text says, yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. And then it goes on. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Again, if there's one lesson that we can learn from what's happening in the world right now, it is that our lives are so fragile and short and uh, we will not live forever in this state, in this world. And um, I think maybe sometimes God uses something like what's going on, like a COVID-19, to remind us of the fragility of our lives, to remind us that we are but dust, but a mist that vanishes, says James. And so if we can't make plans and be confident in the plans that we make, then what should we do? How should we live? Well, James gives us the answer to that too in verse 15. James says, instead of saying, this is what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this tomorrow and this next month and that in the summertime, because you don't even know if you're going to be alive at that point. Instead of that, verse 15, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and we will do this or that. If the Lord wills, we will live. Because our lives are in his hands. Not just our plans are in his hands. Our lives are in his hands. Our heartbeats are in his hands. If the Lord wills for me, for David Lovey to live another day, then I will live another day. No matter what, no one can stop me. Not a virus, not a person, nothing can stop me. If the Lord wills it, I will live another day. If the Lord wills it, I would like to do such and such a thing. That's how we ought to act. That's how we ought to think. That's how we ought to pray. And we should never presume that we have all the time in the world. I just have years and years left of my life. I don't know if I have years and years left of my life. I hope I do. If the Lord wills, I have years left of my life. Now, you might say, well, that's fatalism. 
No, that's not fatalism. That is not because fatalism is a, a mindless, uh, deterministic, um, materialistic worldview. No, no, no. I believe that my hands, or my life, are in the hand is in the hands of a God who actually cares, who actually loves, who loves me, who loves sinners. And he has a good plan. It might not be a plan that I would have chosen. It might not be the way that I wanted to have it. But God has a plan for our lives and he is a good God and he's going to work that out. And so we can ask him, Lord, please allow me to do such and such a thing. If it is your will, then you will allow me to do it. Amen. That's the right heart attitude. That's the way that we should approach uh, our lives, actually. Every single morning, waking up and saying, Lord, thank you for today. Thank you that it was your will for me to live. And I trust you with my today, and I trust you with tomorrow, if you would be pleased to give me that. And God is good. His plan is good. It's always good. And like I said earlier in, in another video, um, that only the light of eternity will ultimately show how good all of his plans for us ultimately were. There are times when we feel severe disappointments, but ultimately God is the one who's working it all out and it will all make sense in the end because of him. God bless you. Place your life in Jesus' hands. He is the good shepherd who cares about us. Amen.